Uh, as we told you earlier that uh, if you fit the handbrake in straight it will actually hit the tunnel side so what we've done is on the handbrake you've got a point here that it narrows in and all we've done is just put that in the vise don't cramp it up just gently hold it in the vise and just gently pull the handbrake over until you've got the desired angle uh, when you do that you may just have to uh, knock a flat head screwdriver in between the wall of the handbrake and the cable just to make sure that the handbrake still functions as it should do and as you can see you've got a ratchet type system here so make sure that it operates and it's going to click back in and work as a working handbrake so once you've done that We've also left the carpet uh, free, so all we've done is we've located the hole, the two holes and the cutout and just feel around with your finger until you're satisfied where the hole is. Use a, a Stanley knife, just cut a slot, don't try and cut the hole, I'll just cut a slot. And also locate the holes here and here. Just use a little screwdriver first, plunge that through your carpet and I've just taken a, a larger screwdriver and holding your carpet firmly in position, just push that through. So once you've got your slot and you've got your two holes, you're going to put your uh, handbrake through the hole there. Line it up with the two holes, there and there. Sorry, I'm trying to put it on the wrong way around. So that's going to sit there and there. So as you can see, bend that into position, and that's going to miss the uh, side there. So then you can just put your bolts through and cramp it up and of course you're going to fit your cable, your handbrake cable and everything to that. We're just showing you how to fit the, uh, the lever at the moment. We come now to the luggage compartment set which includes the finishers that go over the cockpit sides that you step over to get into the car and the ones that go behind your right elbow as a driver and these come in a set, they're made from plastic and there is a grain finish so if you wish you could just put them on um, without painting them and without covering them in leather cloth. If you want to make a super job then you cover them with leather cloth. So they come exactly in the form as you see them now. There is, a, there is also a, a sheet that forms a lid um, for, the, um, for the set. So basically the these arch shape panels are the ones that go under your elbows that one just there and that one goes on the cockpit sides that you step over and these two go on the rear corners of the car. You can see there is a suggestion for the filler cap there and another one on that side. So whether you have a left or a right hand filler is up to you. Obviously the one that you don't use you'll blank off as a dummy or you'll, um, or you'll perhaps make it a twin tank car. So basically you have to cut these pieces out, or oh, this piece is the one that goes across the very back of the car. You have to cut these pieces out 
and they are quite easy to cut and you need something like a pad saw or at the minimum uh, an ordinary hacksaw blade. I do them by hand. Um, I do them by hand and I take your time, don't rush it uh, and you'll find it's quite a pleasurable job. So you may find that you want to cut them out roughly first. Um, so at the end of the day you need to cut right into that corner like that. The main oversize so there's plenty for you to go on. So you need to cut all the way around there like that and the same with the other rooms all the way around there. And that will give you the maximum that will give you the maximum of material to work with. Once you've cut those out, then you can actually try them on the car and it's just a matter of successively trimming a little bit more off and a little bit more off until they fit. So I'm going to leave these lads to cut these bits out very carefully, very slowly and then um, we'll come back and show you how they go on the car. There is a P-shaped um, little piece that you've got to cut out just there all the marks are there just to follow them. So that bit there goes um, under the roll bar stay and then um, that half a bite out just there is actually for the roll bar. So it's a nice pleasant job. Um, the lads will cut those out and then we'll, we'll come back to them later. Now come to removing the uh slight black uh, line that we had on the edge of the aluminium. And as you can see, all we've done is we've gone in around about five millimetres and put a layer of uh, masking tape all the way around. And you just simply take a really soft cloth, as uh, we explained to you earlier, you want the softest cloth you can possibly get, uh, maybe uh, proper car polishing cloths that you can buy. And just take your teacup, your cloth, basically just keep rubbing down just in the area that you want to remove the black from. Just keep rubbing it down. Try not to go over your line. You might want to put cardboard maybe on on top underneath you just to stop you getting any marks on you in a week. But if you be careful, you shouldn't need to do that. Just keep rubbing until you've got out all the black. Also, maybe get a, a good soaker material. Again, really soft material just to keep wiping around so call you decut up then once you're happy with what you've got you, all your GRP is nice and clean it's all polished you've got a nice edge and all the black is uh, out you can then just peel your masking tape off and just uh, with a very, very, again, very, very soft cloth, and they just rub down your wing, tie it all up, get any fingerprints off. Be careful, very careful not to scratch it. They uh, could probably do the same, well, all over your car if you wanted to, just to make it look nice and polished. And that's it. As you can see, I've now polished up the uh, wing. And uh, made such a nice job of the edge that uh, decided to make a bit more of a feature on the car of uh, by taking the polished area in an uh, inch in, and just all I've done is just run some masking tape level with the edge of the aluminium there first, and then I put another strip of tape here, 
at the side of it, that just gives you a nice uh, edge and it makes sure that it's nice and level with the edge that you've got here and then peel back the first layer of masking tape and then just polish it in up to the line of your second masking tape when you're happy you've got it uh, polished how you want it just peel off the masking tape and then you can clean down the rest of your wing and it should all look nice you may decide you could polish it as much as you want you could polish all the whole of your wing if you wished but just do make sure that you use a nice uh, soft cloth come down to uh, fitting the seat belt harnesses which we've got a set of Sabel seat belts what you're going to do is we're just going to line that up with the seat we've got two holes the first of which is also the inner hole that's captivating the shock absorber mounting. So what we're actually doing is we've jacked the car up off the floor again to uh, release the tension on the spring and we've took the bolt out there. And we've also got another hole here in line. You can see that the hole here is 150 millimeters to the centre. The hole there is 100. 365 millimetres to that centre there. So simply get the two bolts that come in the seat belt package. I'll just drill them around to just drill on. access all underneath the car again and if you if you need to jack your car up to get underneath uh, I advise you're going to use a couple of blocks because you are going to have to get under the car and you don't want uh, the car falling just off the jack so make sure it's nice and secure block your front wheels up make sure it's not going to go anywhere before you 
Put your arms and your head underneath the car. So as you can see that, this is the one is uh, going through the side of the car there and inside the wheel arch here behind the wheel. So we're going to put a large spread of oxygen on again on the outside. So that's that, that's the harness fitted, as you can see, it's looking alright, your head will be in the middle of there, fits nice with the seat, and that's that fitted, all it leaves us to do is to put the, the chair back in, hoover it out, and bolt the bottom seat back in. Come back to the uh, manifold and side and sit, um, you need uh, something to grip this together, to make sure it doesn't leak uh, exhaust fumes, so we're going to just use the uh, proper manifold uh, U-bolt here, put the U-bolt on, put the uh, one on that one, I think, maybe. that one like that, Coming now to the uh, last few finishing touches really on the car and we're going to assume that you've hooked your cables up to your lights and everything's working okay and once you assume that they're working you're going to align them up to make sure they're both parallel you can slightly adjust them forwards and backwards and then we're going to tighten those in position while here concentrating on the lights at the same time you notice that they've uh, Threaded a little bit of the black beading around the edge. Um, you have got little indicator um, tabs on these light brackets. Just file those away or snip them off before you uh, put on the edge trim. And we've done that on both light brackets, of course. Of course coming back to the fly screen, and we've uh, just loosened off the screws. Got a little bit of the yellow tab ball beading. Just fed that on there, pushing it down. You may just have to clip uh, some little V's out the back of the tadpole bead just to get it to go around the uh, bend here. Feed it on there, just screw down again, fastening the uh, screws down, just to pull it down, and that should hold that in position. On the other side of the uh, fly screen, as you notice, we've, uh, as I said before, we've cut the uh, bolts down, the set screws down. 
just to make them look like they're nice. And after we've cut them down, we've also just put a little bit of black paint on the back just so it all looks a nice colour. Uh, I've also very carefully we've put some um, masking tape down, down the fly screen, and just run a very, very small uh, bead of silicon in there. And just wet your finger and just gently don't force it through the holes. Just run his finger down there just to make it look a nice uh, bead and that will fill the, uh, the cutouts that was in the back of the flyer screen. At the same time we've also, as you can see, we've put some of the snap-on edge beading onto the uh, scuttle and that uh, covers the uh, rivets that we put in earlier. Um, we've also come in with the uh, just to show you the clocks again that we put in earlier. Uh, and just, these are just a simple screw back clocks and they fit nice and tight in the, uh, the oval that we made here. And you just simply slot in the clock, screw your back on uh, once it's all been put into position and that will hold itself in position then. Just come onto the wheel here because we've used the Robin Hood uh, set of alloy wheels. We've also uh, got the centres, the snapping centres, you just simply snap those in and we've put to the Robin Hood sports car badges on. Uh, these locate yourselves, don't worry if you don't get them all uh, on the same plane because you can just simply just rotate that anywhere you want. And if if you're going to take your car to a show or anything and you're going to stand it in one position and you want these Robin Hood wheels, you can just, if you want to, just rotate those around until all, all your badges sit in a line and just make it look nice. We've also, on the nose cone, we've put the uh, same Robin Hood sports cars badge on. And if you look on your nose cone, there's a very small indentation and you can actually feel it just there. It, you might have to just manoeuvre around because it can be uh, difficult to see and that indicates where your badge should go if you're going to put that on. That's Make sure you've obviously put it on nice and straight. Just get it where you want it really and that's on. Now come to the uh, light bracket for the uh, number plate bracket, sorry, and all we've done is we took the number plate bracket and the uh, light, just remove the backing, hold that on the uh, plate there, so you put two marks on where you want your holes, drill those out, put two corresponding holes on the bottom, as close as you can to the bed line there that you've got. And then put your back on. Using two small screws. Feed them in from the back so you can't, it's not going to be visible too much. You can't. If you've got longer set screws, you're gonna have, may have to trim them down to allow you enough room to fit your connector onto the tabs there. Once you tighten that up, I'm just going to slap that on. Make sure it lines up in the centre of your vehicle. Just 
remember that it wants to be the same angle as the back panel there. You see you've got a slight gap and once you tighten your nut up, I close that in place. Simply just drill a hole where you're going to run your cable up to connect it to your light. Press the cover back on and you run the plate on it. That's it, once that's in position, you just put your number plate, centralise it up, drill through your two existing holes that should be in your number plate, and then put two more nuts and bolts there. This is the uh, black vacuum foam plastic that was explained to you earlier. You saw it earlier when it was all in big sheets. We cut it out into individual pieces, and uh, we've cut out the indicator marks and carefully, bit by bit, cut it into position so that it fits around the roll bar and the rear roll bar stays. You can see that we've cut here about 20mm from the top and maintained that distance all the way around, all the way around the back. The way we've done that is we've traced the, that edge with masking tape, took it all the way over and followed the masking tape edge and cut that round. Same on the other side and all the way down here onto the side of the car where you climb it onto those covers as well. We just snip around the edge here to uh, get it around this uh, edge trim and trim it all so it fits in. We've also got a large cover on the back that's made out of a sheet of uh, the plastic which you get with the uh, individual pieces and once you've trimmed it all out screw it up, screw it all down with black screws or whichever way you uh, prefer screw it all down, all the way around don't over, don't over tighten your screws because you, it can pull the plastic too far and maybe crack it so just be careful and after you've done that, that will be the vacuum form plastic fitted and also with used a black marker it is a slightly bit harder to see but it uh, is easier to rub off and don't use any sort of solvents to rub any marks off your plastic if you can help it
for the purposes of this video, this car is now complete. You'll all probably agree with me that the video has now gone on for quite a long time and we've covered a lot of areas in a lot of detail. Um, those of you who have watched it carefully will probably realise that there are areas that we haven't covered, like the hydraulic brakes, the wiring loom, the fuel lines, and of course, getting the engine um, running. We've not covered these areas because um, basically you do need to get expert advice on brakes, on wiring, and particularly on getting the engine running if you've got anything more complicated than this straightforward Pinto engine. Those of you who've got motorbike engines or very high tech modern engines will definitely need help with the ECU side of the engine. Those of you who've got motorbike engines will be going on to another phase altogether with the um, reverse gearbox, drive shafts, um, dry sumps, and things like that. I am happy that um, with the amount of information this video has given you that you will be able to carry on and build your lobby at least to this standard and this state. We'll look at several other points on the car carefully soon um, and I remind you that we have only fitted the standard fly screen. A lot of you will want to fit the forward screen that's available from us. It's a good idea to um, get the car SVA tested without any type of screen on it at all. The simpler you can keep your car for the SVA test, the easier the test will be. Michael and Paul have already started to put um, Stack on edge around various sharp parts of the body. They've also put on the rear luggage compartment cover set that also helps an awful lot. The spare wheel has been placed on the car now to give you a visual idea of how the car will work with the spare wheel, and you'll see that the spare wheel hardware is fastened on with a number plate light and a number plate bracket. Again, they're, they're things that you may want to leave off for the SVA test. The body catches that supplied could have covers to put over them in the form of just a, a stiff vinyl cover. Alternatively, you could buy the correct SBA catches from Rollingwood, they're very popular, they're a rubber over centre catch and do definitely comply with the SBA test. There's lots of areas with the SBA test that we're still not certain. Remember that there is a 100 mil exemption zone around the steering wheel, so you may want to fit the demo vehicles steering wheel and inside the car there are various internal projections that we do need to keep well radius. Remember it's a good idea to try to get hold of the SVA manual because that is right up to date and any new points, any areas of amendment will be in that manual. There is an awful lot of help officially and unofficially through the internet. But remember don't believe everything tell me lots of people have bad experiences and this is probably due to the fact that the car we take for the SBA test has been really shared. Remember that all the lights that we give you are SBA compatible that they've got the British standard kind of marks on them and um, that having said that you always get an examiner who will decide to interpret the regulations slightly different. These little lamps don't need to be kind of